Assalamu alaikum guys welcome back to civil engineers youtube channel guys today topic is related with building foundation and the topic is combined footings what is combined footing and foundation i've already discussed uh, for foundation how to find depth of foundation different types of footings but today uh, we will discuss all about combined footings okay so there are more details as you can see like uh, so this is combined footing uh, why combined footings provide in building construction uh, also types of uh, combined footing you can see uh, types of combined footings so uh, therefore you must watch this video from start to end then you are able to learn something new related uh, in foundation especially for combined footings okay uh, also uh, types of combined footing as you can see so we will discuss for a uh, combined footing okay let's start guys before starting the video if uh, this topic is helpful for you so uh, you will not pay for like this video so like this video for my motivation and if you did not subscribe the channel so subscribe the channel with press bell icon then you will get notification for new civil engineering videos okay let's start guys the topic is what is combined footing and foundation specially okay so let me focus the camera yes guys combined footings are provided when the distance between two column is small and soil bearing capacity of soil is lower and their and their footings overlap with each other how you can see guys as you know we have also a footing that is called this footing is called isolated footing okay so uh, this is column and this is footing okay this is called isolated footing so now this is combined footing so combined footing is same like this okay so this is one column and this is for other column right so guys you can see the definition of combined footing must watch this video from start to end maybe uh, it will uh, take more time but this is very interesting topic okay combined footing are provided when distance between two column is small okay if distance between two column is small so there we provide combined footing okay but if space between our distance between two column is more so there we will provide individual footing or that is called isolated footing okay so combined footing are provided when the distance between two column is small and the soil bearing capacity is lower bearing capacity of the soil is f low low bearing capacity okay so for the low bearing capacity of soil we will provide combined footing okay sbc is low their footing overlap with each other like as you can see guys this is one column okay and this is other column as you know guys here if i provide footing for one individual column okay so there if i provide the other footing like this because the space is small so one footing and other footing become overlap you can see and their footing overlap with each other so in that situation we will provide combined footing so this is the reason you can see guys here in this picture this is combined footing this is one column this is second column and this is called combined footing so this is the plan of combined footing as you can see this is cross section of combined footing okay this is one column this is other column right like this okay you can see here uh, in 3d picture this is called combined footing okay this is footing you can see so this is one column this is other column this is called combined footing now guys let me discuss more when two columns are close together and separate isolated footing okay and separate isolated footings would overlap when the isolated footing overlap with each other it cross each other so it is better to provide combined footing than isolated footings okay because isolated footing is designed for individual footing just for one it support just one column isolated footing but combined footing uh, support two column or more than two columns like this okay 
Now, guys, let me discuss why we provide combined footing. Okay, so why combined footings provide in building construction? Okay, this is the second time. Uh, this is uh, the second topic. Sorry. First point. The distance between two columns is small and when the soil bearing capacity is lower and their footings overlap with each other before as I discussed. Okay, this is the first point. Therefore, we provide combined footings. Second, when one column is close to a property line or sever pipe, the center of gravity of the column will not concede with footings. Okay, in such a cases, it is necessary to provide combined footing this footing with that of the adjacent internal column you can see guys is if this is my boundary wall okay this is my property line so guys this is one column because this is property line and this is the second column so here in this case we will provide combined footing Therefore, this is the other point because at the mid, so there we can provide for two columns or for three columns. Okay, we can provide combined footing. Okay, but especially for property line, you can see when the column is close to the property line or saver pipe or any other obstacle, so the center of the gravity of the column will not concede with footings. Okay, so in the case, it is necessary to provide combined footing with that adjacent internal column okay third dimensions of one side of footing are restrict to some lower value that column footings may be combined okay when the dimensions are close okay and dimensions one side of the footing are restricted to some lower so in that case we also provide combined footing Guys, the combined footing may be rectangular, trapezoidal in the shape or T-shaped in a plan. Okay. The ultimate aim to get uniform pressure distribution under the entire area of the footings. So this is also the other reason. To achieve this, the center of gravity of the footing area should be conceived with the center of gravity of the total load of two or more columns right this is the other point now guys you can see types of combined footing so what are the types of combined footing you can see types of combined footing the first type is slave type combined footing slave type as you can see like this so this is footing you can see this is footing And this is column and this is NSL or ground level okay so this is one column this is other column this is called slab type combined footing now guys you can see the slab combined footing support two or more column with bottom slab only okay it is used for this this is the first type of combined footing guys now this is the other you can see two number slab beam type combined footing so slab and beam type combined footing you can see this is same like before i by as i discussed this is slab and this is beam okay so slab and beam type combined footing you can see this is beam and this is column this one this is also column you can see this is column with footing this is the other type of combined footing okay the third one is guys strip beam type combined footing strip beam okay same like strip strip beam type combined footing how you can see this is one same like individual you can see this is column this is other column Okay, because this is a property line so therefore so it becomes strip strip beam column like this this is the section okay our elevation and this is the top view this type of column or uh, footing is called strip beam footing combined uh, type combined footing sorry okay now guys you can see where we can provide this one and why we provide uh, uh, strip beam type footing uh, combined footing 
Strip beam type combined footing is used when one column is located on a property line. As you can see, one column is located on property line. So this is property line. Property line. PL I have written. Okay. Acronym. Now you can see guys and resulting is an eccentric load. Okay. So because this is eccentric load due to eccentric load on a portion of the footings so therefore provide a beam in the footing so provide a beam in the footing to adjust column okay column footing to the restrain the overturning effects so therefore we provide it now guys the rectangular footing is provided the rectangular footing is provided when one column is projections of the footing is restricted or the width of the footing is restricted therefore we provide rectangular footing rectangular footing is provided when one one of the projections of the footing is restricted or width of footing is restricted so therefore due to width we make rectangular footing okay uh, because it will not, not uh, make problems on the construction side so therefore we provide rectangular footing now guys the last one is in this last page that is rectangular combined footing okay as you can see this is rectangular combined footing this is not square combined footing so you can see this is one side uh, is width okay and this is its length this one as you can see this is plan and this is section this is one column this is second column so this is the top this is column this is also the other column this type is called uh, a rectangular combined footing okay you can see this is the uh, center line x-axis this is plan this is column okay this is other column like this now guys be, uh, come to trapezoidal so this is uh, rectangular as i discussed here uh, rectangular column this one the rectangular footing is provided when the projection same like this okay the trapezoidal footing is provided when the load of one column is much more the trapezoidal footing is provided when the load of the one column is much more than another column if one column load is more and other is less so due to more load of the column we provide trapezoidal footing if there is the outer column is near to the boundary line carrying the heavier load provision of the trapezoidal column so become essential to bring the center of gravity to the footing line with the center of gravity of the total load of the column when we provide trapezoidal trapezoidal footing like this when the one column load is more than other okay because it can uh, fit the center of gravity due to more load okay so then we will provide uh, trapezoidal footing as you can see guys i've already discussed uh, from the start of uh, combined footing this is the first as you can see uh, today we have discussed in this uh, long video i will say uh, combined footing as you can see this is combined footing so uh, what is combined footing and uh, is it important or not and why it's important the second why combined footing provide okay so keep in your mind this thing uh, the other uh, topic that was a uh, type of combined footing as you can see slab type combined footing uh, the other one is uh, slab and beam type combined footing the other one is strip uh, beam uh, type combined footing and the last one is also uh, the rectangular rectangular uh, footing and the last one is uh, trapezoidal footing okay so these are uh, some important points and combined footing and uh, all about its full details so if you have any question related with this topic so you can comment guys i will try to reply your answer if the topic is helpful for you so must like the video so thanks for watching see you in next video goodbye